really, you kind of have to treat these as a whole. Hi everybody, I'm Luke Hector from The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, please remember you can thumb up the video, subscribe to the channel or the Patreon, but most of all, get your comments down below about anything I talk about in this episode with regards to Viscount to the West Kingdom. We'll get on with the video in just a moment. First, a quick word from the sponsor. As a fellow gamer, you'll understand this is unacceptable. The solution? Head down to my new sponsor, kiender.co.uk. Kiender stocks many of the hot new releases as well as some old hidden gems. Free delivery on orders over £30, further discounts on bulk purchases, and even 5% of your spending refunded back to you as points to be used for further discounts down the line. If you use the referral link in the description below and sign up for a new account, you'll get 5% discount on your first order over £60. So let's make gaps in your collection a thing of the past. Get down to Kiender and start saving today. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the video. Get on with it. So today I'm excited because I get to talk about one of my favorite games of all time, which is Viscount of the West Kingdom. I, it's no secret that I like a lot of Garfield games as stuff. Not everything. I mean, I've not played Shipwrights and Explorers, but I hear they're not particularly great. And I wasn't the biggest fan of Paladins once I played it a bit more after my review. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm seeing a few chinks in the armor. But Raiders and Architects and Viscounts, I love all three of those games. And also, slight spoiler alert, I like the Wayfarers game as well from what I've played. But this is a Beyond the Base game video, which if you don't know what this is, it's where I talk about expansions to games to let you know what's the, in, included in the content and which ones I recommend that you should get and shouldn't get. This is where I'm going to talk about the two newest expansions of this game, Keeper of Keys and Gates of Gold, which have recently just fulfilled on Kickstarter and are now out with backers and should hit retail stores at some point in the future, I would imagine. So... First off, if you're a sustainability nut, then these are going to make you flip your lid <laughs> because yes, you've got two separate boxes here with nice artwork. There is absolutely no reason at all that these needed to be two separate boxes because the content for one of these could fit, no, the content for both of these could fit in one of these small boxes. I really don't get why it was split. It makes no sense. And if you're worried about unused packaging and stuff like that, then as I say, this is gonna make you go crazy because I no longer need these once I'm done with this video. Maybe I'll hang them up on the wall if I've got room on my expansion board over there. But yeah, not the best in terms of being, you know, sustainable, shall we say. But on top of that, you've also got the collector's box here. And mm, yes, when it comes to collector's boxes, uh, Garfield games don't tend to be the top gun in this department here. I mean, they're great they can, in, in terms that they can hold everything in there, but they've been a bit hit and miss as to whether they're very functional or like have stuff that you can take out or whether you've got to package things in a weird way. I've got the Raiders one, I've got the Architects one, and in both cases, it's a bit hmm, like why do I have to package it like this? Why have I got to squeeze it in like this? Not the biggest fan of that. Well, this one is the best of the three, but it's still far from perfect. Thankfully, Viscounts of the West Kingdom is a major like card game. So as a card game, it's mostly just cards. So they store in here fine. But, and there's a good central bit here to put your, you know, your various tiles and the little rondelle machine that, that goes round. The rest of it, on the other hand, though, is a bit, what on earth were you thinking? Firstly, yes, you've got a cubby hole for the coins, and you've got a cubby hole for resources. The problem is, is that if you put everything in there, it's a nightmare to get the stuff out. And even then, you might as well bag them up, and you're forced to put the resources all in the same bag. At what point do, like, inserts want you to combine all the resources together? The fact that I've got to combine them is annoying. Now, I know the buddy of mine um, from Side Games LLC has done a video where he's basically carved out some of this insert and done it in a different way. I might be willing to copy him on this and take a craft knife to this and sort of do my own little thing, but for now, this suffices. The weakest point of this by far though is the player pieces. The cubby hold spaces that you're supposed to put these in though, I double dare you to put these outside of a bag, squeeze them into the cubby holes they've got here for them, and still get them out with your fingers. My fingers are not the fattest fingers ever. Big, good, strong hands. But I can't get the stuff out easily enough. And they want you to do this 
four times over and I have to squeeze them back in here in the bag in order to make certain that things go on top and stay flat. It's really annoying. On top of that, I mentioned that this thing holds the tiles underneath. That's all well and good, except when you add the promo ones that you get in there, they don't necessarily all fit in the order you want them to. So it's just, I don't get why these collector's boxes are like so difficult for them to get right. They should be better. Why can't you have removable trays? I mean, the folded space insert that I had in the original Viscount's box in here was pretty solid. It did a decent job. Granted, it couldn't hold expansion content because these boxes were too small, but it's a shame that I've had to ditch it in order to use this particular insert because even though with Architects I cannibalized my folded space insert and made it work somehow with that one, it didn't quite work with this one with the way that the folded space insert was designed. So again, it's a hit and miss affair, but it is still the best of the three. I mean, I've still managed to store everything in this box in a reasonable sense because the cards will store absolutely fine. No flaw with the card storage. It's just having to put the resources together and having to bag up like the player Viscount pieces separate and all that. It's, it's a bit of an annoyance, but as I say, it's still better than the rest. And at least now you have a big box with a really nice cover and good artwork. So, you know, not the best. I'd give it, say... Probably a 6 out of 10 max for the collector's box, but as I say, you're not going to be able to get the expansions in here very easily, not without some major jiggery pokery, so this is a convenient way to do it, and I do like the art on the cover. It is pretty sweet. So that's just to quickly talk about the collector's box. I have a package for you. So what's it going to be, Fizz Geek? Which one? Which one should we do? <laughs> right, okay. Fizz Geek has spoken. Keeper of keys we're going to tackle first. So... Like I said, each one doesn't add a huge amount of extra content, combine the two and you get pretty much everything that you're going to want. But Keeper of Keys is mainly about three things, public buildings, heroes and chests. So the public buildings are very straightforward, it's essentially three cards, three tiny pieces, you know, nothing particularly major. But what they essentially do is if you go to a spot where you've already built, you can exchange the building you've placed, providing you've got the hammers, with um, a public building and each one has some special ability that lasts throughout the game and gives you more points and an instant bonus It's just something that everybody can go for. It's a very minor addition I mean sometimes a public building will never get built It depends because I mean if you build one you've got to put the building back on your board So you lose what bonus it gave you before so it's up to you whether you actually want to bother doing a public building or not Especially when one of them gives you a permanent criminal icon you might not be willing to get yourself a permanent criminal icon. It could backfire for you. So it's a really minor thing, but whatever, it's cool. And one thing with these expansions that you will notice is that out of the four paths to victory, castle, manuscript, building, and trade slash card flipping, there's definitely trying to balance out the other three from castles because castles, whereas I don't subscribe to the fact that it's overpowered, I do think it is easier to do well with. Like, you, you know, if you spam the castle with people, generally you will do fine, but you can't just spam manuscripts and do well. You've got to get the right ones. So they basically tried to work both these expansions to kind of keep castles on the same level and bring the other ones up. And this is the start of the buildings one. Next up, you got the heroes, and I love this. You get a few heroes in here as well, so it's both expansions that add to it, but heroes are definitely more of a focal point here. Previously, you had a reasonable amount of heroes. I mean, you chose from a small deck, and you got to start with a cool character that went into your deck. Well, between both expansions, but certainly this one, you end up with uh, quite substantially more. And the reason for that is not just simply variable setup, but because you now have the ability to recruit a hero during the game. And this is brilliant. More options and a chance to get a really cool, powerful character. You've got more setup cards, so now you've got a decent amount of ways that the game can set up, and some of them could even start you with a different hero or even an extra hero. But the idea is, is that now in the tab below, you basically now have a few heroes available, and should you come across a new icon that allows you to recruit a hero, you can now recruit one. And they don't cost money, it's just a case that you have to trigger a very specific icon in order to get one. But it's great that I can start with, say, Isabet here, and, and then later on down the line, I'm like, hmm, you know what, uh, I can have more heroes. You know what, I'm going to have a Delphine in here, and then we'll have a Clovis from the previous, you know, the base set. And it's just great to have this variety of hero 
heroes, all of which have very cool, funky abilities. I mean, Isabet's one of my favourites here. She's got three trade icons on her, and she allows you to draw two cards and discard two cards. You can cycle through your deck like crazy with this lady, not to mention three trade icons really gives you a decent like, you know, amount to do with the trade bags on your turn. Combine it with another hero like Gerard, for example, with free trade symbols, and you can have trade all over the place. Very good for a card-flipping deck management strategy. But, yeah, there's a lot of different ones on here, and I love these heroes, and the fact that you can now recruit them during the game is so much better than just having one at the start of the game and then chucking the rest away. Really cool addition, and nice and simple. It's just another set of cards that you lay out. But then, let's get on to the chest tiles. So, the chest tiles are... Kind of, let's see, let's pull out a few from here as well. There's more in there, but essentially what these are, let's use the box as a way of showing, these are solo AI ones. So you've got the solo, can pick up some chests during a game, but players lay out four of these chest tiles at the start of the game. And again, rev revised starter characters and various other icons allow you to get a chest tile. What happens is that your board, which now has funky cutout holes for uh, you know the collision markers and notches at the bottom, not to mention, made out of card, thank god, about time. But basically what you can do is that you can put chest tiles underneath your board like so, and you can have slots for three of them. And basically the idea is, is that as soon as a character moves moves onto that slot, regardless of whether you played it or it moved on there, if there is a chest below it, it will have in the green banner a type of icon requirement, and if you meet the requirement, it basically makes the card that much better. So, for example, let's see, the one I was just showing you there is as long as they've got two trade bags on their card, you also get a stone immediately, so you just get the icon. Uh, this one allows you to turn one clergy symbol into two clergy symbols. Here you can turn a hammer into also a fleur de Leon and a clergy symbol. So there's various ones here that just allow you to do simple things. Some even give you stuff for criminal cards and uh, other types of cards that we'll get onto a bit later, but, you know, there's a decent amount of variety here. And you can ignore them or you can get them. You know, you'll get some victory points, two, five, nine, if you get one, two, three chests. But other than that, you could decide, you know what, I'm going to have a massive row of chests or I'm going to have none at all. What they do do is allow you to formulate, you know, really hone down on a particular strategy. Like, you know, if I really want clergy symbols, I'm going to want several of these chests that give me more clergy symbols. It allows you to do more powerful things, but you've got to take the time to get the chests and how long is it taking you to get that. Yeah, you can just create some cool little combos and they're not particularly difficult to understand. None of them are really, you know, like FAQ wordy things and they just go below your board. Nice and simple. One of your starter characters can get you a chest once she drops off the board. Nice and simple. Easy addition. The chests. And that's basically Keeper of Keys. So there's not a huge amount in this particular set, but what it adds is all pretty good. The chests are an easy inclusion. The heroes are a great inclusion. Love the fact that heroes are now more playable. Public buildings, whatever. I mean, you could actually just leave them out and you wouldn't really notice the difference. But honestly, it's free cards and free models. Just shove them in. It really isn't that much of a problem. What this is doing is basically giving you more options to play the game with. So now you can go after chess, you can go after heroes, you can go after the public buildings, more stuff to do, more ways to get points. It's the sort of thing that I like from an expansion. Yes! Now, this is what I'm talking about. So now we move on to the Gates of Gold, and again, this adds a little bit of extra content. As I say, you could have had two of them in the same box, but this one focuses more on the Outsider cards, a new concept, King's Order cards, which is related to them, as well as some extra bonus cards. Both of these introduce more townsfolk and more of the good stuff like that, which is always a nice thing. But here, you've got a few extra little more additions here. So starters, we've got these manuscript boards here. So everybody starts off with one, and it gives you a one color icon um, manus manuscript from the start of the game that allows you to get King's Order cards. More on that in a minute. But mainly, it's a holding pen for your manuscript, so you can easily see what you've got, what colors you need. And as soon as you get one of a particular color, you unlock a little ability like convert resources to cash, cash to cards, resources to rearrange your board, stuff like that. And it's just nice, simple inclusion, but it's cool that you get one manuscript at the start of the game, so it makes set collection just that tiny bit easier. And everybody's board is slightly different, so just because I start with a yellow doesn't mean you will. The abilities will be the same, but they'll be on different colours. So you're not all gunning for the exact same colour manuscript. Nice easy inclusion, and like I said, it just makes manuscripts that little bit more powerful. So the bonus cards are pretty straightforward. I'm not going to get them out of the box, but essentially you now have 
about six or seven different bonus cards for when you're the leader on the castle. Previously, it was just a hand size. Now, there's all sorts of things you can get. But there's now also bonus cards for buildings. So you've got at least about sort of like eight of each type of same building or diversification. Three different buildings, three of the same building. And the idea is, is that when you make the requirement for those buildings, you get the bonus card that's out in play. You only choose one of each. So there's a lot of variety and you get the bonus, you get whatever it gives you and more victory points. It's basically like those clergy bonus tiles when you get three of the same color manuscript. Well, now you've got them for buildings. Buildings have definitely had a bit of an upgrade in terms of their power level in these expansions. I mean, you've got the public buildings, now you've got these special like diversify and free of the same buildings. And you don't even have to be focused on buildings to earn them. I mean, I may literally be more concerned about getting free of the same type of building because it helps my other strategy. Well, cool, there's a bonus card for it. But then I might just be doing as many buildings as I can. Well, great, I'll diversify pretty quickly, so let's do that. It's easy enough to get them and they're a cool inclusion. But let's get on to the meat of this expansion and that is these outsider cards with the King's Order cards to go with them. So the King's Order are just a basic card that you grab when you can recruit a townsfolk. They cost free money, they got a trade icon. All well and good, but they go on your board just like any other card, but they also stay in your hand. It depends what you do with the King's Order card though as to how it works with the Outsiders. If you trash it from your hand, you dismiss the Outsider much like you dismiss a Townsfolk. But if you let it drop off your board, then you get to hire the Outsider. So dismissing the Outsider is pretty straightforward. They've got dismiss bonuses, they're very powerful, I mean instantly get a chest, uh, flip a deed, get free gold, two resources of your choice, free ink, free gold, get a deed, get a hero, but they usually require you to gain corruption or debts in the process. So you can't have powerful effects without some kind of detriment, that's the way it works. I beg to differ, sir. They are playable characters in their own right if you want to hire these things. And the great thing with these outsiders is, well, for starters, you've got uh, quite a few of them. There's quite a decent amount of them. But what they are is their end game victory point conditions. So, yes, they've been airlifted straight out of Paladins of the West Kingdom. It's like straight ripoff. But they've got all sorts of things like victory point per person in the outside of the castle, uh, uh, counts as an extra manuscript, uh, one per person in the outer ring, one plus one per yellow manuscript, uh, one plus one per blue manuscript, three victory points, uh, every set of a set of buildings gives you four, one plus one for every hero, one plus one for every outsider, flip debts and deeds at the end, there is all sorts of different conditions, but they don't give you anything else during the game except for the icons on the card, which tend to be pretty powerful. I mean, you tend to get either criminals or two icons on the card, so they are pretty useful in that right, but there's no drop-off or player or continuous abilities for the outsiders. So it's all well and good having the outsiders, but then they're clogging up your hand, they're clogging up your deck, they're, they're on your board, not necessarily contributing much apart from just the icons. So there is that factor to bear in mind, and sometimes you may not want an outsider until a bit later but then somebody comes along and takes your outsider or dismisses them for an ability. You gotta be a little bit careful in that regard. So that's essentially what Gates of Gold is mainly about. So King's Order with the outsiders, more ways to score points, more little strategies to gun for. Always a good thing. Other than that though, you get more townsfolk like before and you get like more bonuses, some more manuscripts in there to bolster what you've already got in the game. Now the solo mode in these is pretty much unchanged. You get an extra scheme card for that works with the various expansion elements. You just shuffle them into the scheme deck and you carry on the solo mode as, all, as always. But you can easily use every module with the solo mode. I have done so. It is great fun <laughs> to have the AI go after chess, to have them go after outsiders now and again, and for you to have all those options. This is why Superman works alone. So that is essentially the Gates of Gold and the Keeper of Kings and the Collector's Box of by accounts of the West Kingdom. So I mentioned that the collector's box is kind of a six out of 10. It could have used a bit more, like a few more changes, definitely a little bit of extra thought as to like some of the cubby holds, maybe like don't put cubby holds in that are only for midget fingers. I don't know what kind of fingers, uh, is, is it an Australian thing? I don't know. How can you have fingers that small for those sort of containers? I don't know, but as I say, still holds seven in in, so fine, six out of 10. These are very difficult to rate individually because the thing is this, all the content in this, I will throw into every single game of Viscounts, even if I'm teaching it. I won't not use the content in here because, frankly, it's a bit like the expansions to Architects of the West Kingdom. If you know how to play the base game, then these are such a small addition in terms of complexity that you might as well just throw it all in. I mean, why not? 
And as I mentioned, all the content from these could fit in one box. When you open the box and you see the trench, like cardboard trench, with like one deck of cards and a couple of boards, you gotta think that sustainability is a bit of a problem and you are kind of curious as to why they were packaged separately in the first place. Why didn't you just call it got Gates of Gold and there's your expansion. Just forget the whole Keeper of Keys thing, just chuck it away. It's a bit of an odd way of doing it, but I can't really rate them individually. I mean, if I was to say which is my favorite, it's gonna be the Gates of Gold. I think having the Outsiders and the King's Orders are really cool and those bonus cards lead to some variety with the buildings, but really, you kind of have to treat these as a whole. You would get this along with this. I can't imagine you would buy one of them and not like the other. If you're gonna like one, you're gonna love the other. It's, they're just, they're two of the same really. As I said, this really should have just been one expansion and it would have made more sense. But in terms of the content, I love the content in this. I mean, this basically gives you more of the good stuff, but also gives you more ways to score points and more strategies to go for, more variety. I mean, you've got all of the extra townsfolk, now you've got heroes, you've got chests, you've got the bonus cards, you've got the outsiders. It just means that when you've got it all laid out, I sort of go, right, when am I gonna do this game then? And then you get more tactical opportunities. Like you're, you're gunning for the buildings and you're doing that, but then it's like, well, hang on, no, there's a nice outsider there that goes good for buildings. Right, well, how can I get a King's Order card quick? That'd be sweet. Yeah, let me grab that and see if there's a way that I can just let that tick off the board. Come on, don't nick my outsider. Oh, hang on, there's a nice townsfolk there. That'd be nice. Oh, that chest tile requires hammers. Well, hang on, uh, can I get a chest tile anywhere? Let's have you tick over. It just creates so many of these little short-term plans that you try to do in the middle of eye counts, which you already were doing anyway with the townsfolk, but now you have more. And on top of that, it also balances the past to victory. Yes, I, you know, I don't think the castle was overpowered, but it was certainly an easier one to do. The manuscripts have now had a bit of a boost with more variety on the manuscripts, getting one for free at the start of the game, and just the fact that, you know, I think they've just made it a little bit easier to get hold of the things. But on top of that, the buildings have really made it easier to do well with buildings. I mean, whether you want the public buildings or you want the diversification bonus or the group uh, group building bonus, there's just more ways to make buildings just that little bit more lucrative. And I think that the past the victory are now pretty balanced now. You know, fairly well balanced. I've won this game with all the paths to victory. The manuscripts, the castle, the buildings, even just trading and flipping cards on a regular basis and trashing stuff out of my deck. You know, that strategy works for me up to a point. So it's just a really cool, you know, set of expansions. Yeah. I mean, would I teach them? In, I would personally teach it with everyone, although some of my friends were a bit more hesitant on that fact. They thought, oh, you know what, maybe I won't teach it to people who have never played it. But honestly, Viscounts is a more meaty game in the, the West Kingdom lineup, and so I probably wouldn't be teaching this to brand new players who've never seen a Garfield game anyway. I'd teach them Architects or Raiders of the North Sea. This one I'm teaching more to gamers, and if I'm teaching this to gamers, I want to throw everything in the kitchen sink in there. Certainly when I play it solo though, these go in, hands down. Love these expansions. Yes, the collector's box may not be great, but it holds everything. And I gotta give these solid 10 out of 10 expansions. Uh, well, actually, 10 out of 10. Are they essential? I mean, they do add a lot of variety and they do balance out the paths to victory quite a bit. Urgh. I'm gonna give them a 10 out of 10 because I do think they are amazing expansions. Can I call them essential? Probably not. I already enjoyed Viscounts 10 out of 10 before. Before I got these expansions but again it's a case of if I throw these in I'm never taking them out and they do balance the paths to victory in a nice way so I think I'm just giving them 10 out of 10 if you like this game you're grabbing these full stop but if you have never played the game before try Viscounts first on its own and then assuming you like it you then go out and grab these as soon as possible so you know love these two so glad I kickstarted these never gonna do any well what am I gonna do with the boxes now I don't know uh, not a lot I can do, see? Wasted packaging. Everything's all in here now. So that's it for me. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple video. If you like what you see, please remember you can thumb up the video, you can subscribe to the channel or the Patreon, but most of all, let me know your comments about the Viscount series in general. Do you like Viscounts? You know, do you prefer the other series? Actually, yeah, just talk about Viscounts. What do you think of this game? What do you think of the Past to Victory? Have you tried these expansions? Does anything on there sound good? Or was there something I hadn't covered that you want me to explain? Either way, get your comments down below about this fantastic Garfield game. 
I do love these games quite a bit. I mean, Paladins is kind of so-so for me, and, you know, I've not really played Explorers and Shipwrights, but I love Raiders, I love Architects, I love Viscounts, and so far I love Wayfarers. And even the new Scholars one that I've seen uh, clips of looks pretty sweet as well. It's just... They're just really solid midweight euros for me. They just scratch every, they tick every checkbox that I want in a midweight euro. But as I say, that's just me. Maybe they're not for you. We'll see. So take care. I'll see you on the next video. And until next time, you can check out more content on the channel, including the Beyond the Base Game video I did for the Cosmic Encounter expansions. That was a big one. But also, check out the Top 100. Maybe I've already talked about Viscounts. Maybe I haven't. But watch the Top 100 and see for yourself. Take care. And remember, as always, it's only a game. Bye for now.